If you've been watching this series of videos on testing the transistor processor, you'll know that we now have all four of the boards tested. You could just go ahead and stick all four boards into the motherboard and power it up and see if it works. I recommend you test the boards by inserting them one at a time. The reason for that is the interaction between the various boards can be fairly complicated and if you do get a problem, if you have all the boards plugged in, then it's hard to determine where the particular problem lies. So it's easier just to make sure each board works by inserting them, starting with the clock board, control matrix, and then the accumulator, and then finally the ALU. At the moment, I have just the first three of those plugged in. I'll power the processor up. Remember each time you do insert a new board, if you are using a current limited supply to increase the current limit. So you'll need uh, a random amp with the um, the three boards plugged in. So I'll power that up. We're in single step mode so it's not going to run until we start pressing the single step button. But what we're looking for now is that the three registers are updated as they should do. Now they won't have the correct values in according to the program and we've got the same program here we had for the previous test. And the reason they won't update of course is because we don't have the ALU plugged in so there is no mathematical functions being carried out. It's just simply um, loading the floating bus values into the registers. But even so, we should still see these registers update, which will prove that the, the board is working. So I'll start a single step through. We'll go through the program, and when we get to the out instruction, so when you see the out LED come on, the output register should come on, and in between you should see the LU and the register B being updated. So there we have register B and then out comes on and so we know that all three registers on that board are working. So just go through a few times. Be happy it's working. Switch it into free run. Got the slow clock running here and you'll see it going through the program. We have the reset and halt selected so it will just keep running the same program over and over again and the processor is working as we would expect with just three boards so what i'll do now is fit the last board and then we should have a fully functional uh, processor okay that's all four boards plugged in so the processor is finally complete so let's see if it works. I've increased the current limit on the supply to 1.4 amp. You'll need that as a minimum for all four boards to run. Uh, that's at 5 volts of course. So I will power it up. I've switched it back to single step so what it's going to do is going to boot up and, and then do a reset and then it'll just sit waiting for us to just start it running. As we can see it looks promising so far. Now I'll start to single step it through the program and this time because we have the ALU fitted not only should we see the results of the ALU being updated we should see the correct values appearing in the output register. And all, that's all this program does, it adds and subtracts a couple of values and then outputs them to the output register and that's what we should see as we single step through. You can keep track on which particular register should be updated by just observing the control lines. For example, when the LB line uh, goes low, uh, you should see register B updates, uh, and the same with, with LA, etc. I'll single step through the program. You can see that we have the first value in the ALU, which is a value that's come from the accumulator, and the reason it's the same is because the register B is still all zeros. But when we go ahead and lower register B, the mathematical result will show up in the um, the ALU register. So that's register B now loaded, so we have these two values, and if you work out what they should be when added together, then that value should now show in the ALU. Incidentally, you can tell whether it's supposed to be adding or subtracting by looking at the SU LED. Uh, if it's illuminated, then it should be subtracting. If it's not on, it should be adding. Uh, and that value should now be transferred out into the output register on the next phase of the instruction, uh, which it is. So that is now working. It's uh, fully functional. The entire processor is now up and running. Over the next few videos, what I'll do is show how to program it. So we'll run some more advanced programs. We'll connect it to a few external devices 
and um, then we'll see exactly what it can do and uh, maybe have a bit of fun with it.